Well, time for another computer video, I think. This time, the Sinclair ZX81. I think it was sold in America under the name Timex Sinclair 1000 or something like that. But this is one of the very first computers that your average working man could afford. You know, not if you're on the dole, but um, you could have one. They cost around £60, I think, uh, for the fully assembled one. I'm just like that. And there's a barking dog outside. Um, yeah, sixty pounds fully assembled, fifty if you wanted it in kit form. Of course, it has uh, only one kilobyte of internal memory, and this keyboard is sort of a weird membrane, touch-sensitive thing, and um, you know, nowhere near as nice as um, any other keyboard. Even the Spectrum's rubber keys are a bit better. But you can see how tiny this keyboard is. There is a cassette tape for comparison. It's um a pretty small system. So um what I'll do now is show you how it works. And of course only a black and white um video output as well. Uh, there is no one off switch, you just have to plug it straight into the wall and it comes on. And um there you go, that's what you agreed with. The little K for a uh, keyboard input. And you can type little basic programs like um Let's do a counting program. Equals one, two. Oops. The words are actually on the keys, so like um, that there would be load. J would be load, and you do different shift combinations to get the other words. So A equals one. Mm. Anything that's in red, you press shift, shift, and four. That would be two. Two um. 30. Okay, uh, 20, print A. 30, next A. And, um, Equal to thirty. Come on, then. <laughs> this is the problem with this. Um, oh yeah, then stop. Come on, stop. Where are you? Um. Oh yeah, there is a. Okay. Hopefully, go to twenty. Now this should count all the way up to 20, I think. No, 30, I mean. And that is um, the CPU speed we're dealing with here. <laughs> well, actually, it's not even a CPU. It just sort of has a, a do-everything chip. Oh, that's interesting. When it uh, fills up the screen, it doesn't um, scroll down. Hmm. It just stops. Maybe if I do print A and then semicolon. And that will uh, come up like, yeah, okay. So we'll let that one run through, and um, I'll show you a neat little mode this has actually that not many other computers did. All right, it's not stopping at thirty. Okay, <laughs> whatever. We'll stop it there. Um, if A equals thirty, then stop. Yeah, that should um. I don't get why there, that shouldn't work. Oh, unless I need that, um... Here it is, 25 if a... My, my um, programming of this isn't very good. <laughs> it's fair to say. Now, let's see if that stops at 30. Yeah, okay, that stopped. So you see how slowly that went. Now if we go into a mode called fast, basically the way um, the ZX80, the one before this, had a problem, and every time you did something, even pushed a key, the screen would go off momentarily while it is calculating whatever it needs to do. And um, 
they got around that in the ZX81 by making the CPU do what it has to do in between the screen refreshes so you don't actually see the screen flicker you just see it work and um, that obviously made the CPU go a bit slower so if you went into fast mode um, you would have the screen flicker so every time you pushed a key the screen would flash you know, and it would be um, quite horrible to use it that way but while it's it will count to 30 a lot quicker but you won't be able to see anything while it's doing so there see went a bit quicker um, and then you do slow mode to um, this programming in fast mode you, you just cannot do <laughs> it's impossible and the way you reset this is just to pull out the um, power cable and put it back in again and then uh, wait for it to come back on, there it goes um, let me do J for load and that there and the screen does that um, it's not actually intentional, it's just a sort of weird thing and uh, you'll see what happens when I press play on the cassette tape off. Um, those lines, you can actually use those to diagnose any cassette problems. Um, if the lines were too thin, it was too quiet, and if the lines were too thick, it was too loud. Or, no, the other way around. Um, lines too thick, it's too quiet. Lines too thin, it's too loud. So, um, a little glitch that you can actually use. Now, this is a game called Bomber, and uh, it's a 1K basic game. You push any key to drop the bomb on the little square. Yeah, I've just missed it. You don't control the plane, you literally just press one key. <laughs> See if I can get that, come on. Yay! And if you press break, we can actually see the um, listing of the code. And uh, we can only see some of the listing, because uh, for some reason it doesn't actually list for very long. Can we actually see any more of that? No, we can't. Bugger. Oh well, I was going to show you all the code, but it's written in basic. And um, some of it was written in machine code. But um, it's a pretty fun game otherwise, considering it's one kilobyte. Some games like this require the um, 16K expansion pack, but I do not have that, so it um, kind of sucks. Oh well. <laughs> but there you go, that is... Um, there's no actual graphics either, it's all just ASCII characters, if you even want to call it ASCII. Um, but there you go, I don't know... Um, I don't know why I like this system so much, it's just so neat, it's really small, it's pretty cool looking. I mean, I, pr I definitely prefer the look of it compared to the Spectrum. I don't know why, I just... I think it looks really cool. And um, it weighs barely anything, it is incredibly light. And um, you put your RAM expansion in the back there, of course. And uh, all the feet are still on it. That's actually quite a, a quite an unusual thing for a Sinclair system. Usually stuff like the Spectrum, uh, the feet come off. Like I've got one missing right there. Obviously the Spectrum has 48 times more memory than this. So um, if it's capability you're looking for, then it's obviously the Spectrum, because that had colour, it had sound, and it had 48K. But if it's something just really cool and it's fun to play around with. Then the ZX81 is um, probably one of the coolest little systems you can get yourself and they're not as common as the Spectrum but you can get them on eBay they have a few of them on there at any one time they're about £60 if you want a um, fully working one with the cables that you'll need and of course if you're in America you'll have to get the Timex Sinclair because these only work on PAL televisions and you'll have, a, have to have a TV that has a mute function because if you have the sound on with one of these there's no sound coming through the RF so you'll just get you know, you have to turn the sound off and um, when you're in this load um, function um, a lot of new TVs will just come up with a blank blue thing that says no signal so um, to actually have the proper loading screen loading screen you have to have an old television so yeah that is the um, 
There's an X81 for you, and I'm going to end this video dead on 10 minutes.